You sure that's all right? Okay. So basically what we have here is we have the four aces and four red cards. So I'm pretty sure you okay. can see that there. So all that's going to happen is um going to place it's it's an it's an ace assembly as you probably guessed. So I'm going to place the aces down in the traditional T formation like this. See? And we'll use the odd cards one at a time. So I'm just going to start by placing you see that four on top of this leader ace here. Odd cards go here. A little squiggle, a little twist, and hopefully one, two, three, four cards. Yeah, to, just tilt them a little bit towards the camera so we can see the, the faces. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. And of course, we have two aces. So that's one, two aces. Try the same thing again. Let's just take this card here. Place it on top of this east. Little twist. And we should find we've got one, two, three, four odd cards. And over here, we should find we have the three aces. One, two, three aces. So, last one to go. Watch this ace travel down. But actually what happens is that these three aces travel up. So we have here one, two, three, four red cards. There we go. I like that. Quite simple. Honestly. Quite simple routine, you know. Uh, I love that. That double lift you did with four cards, I, I have no idea how you do that. Like, I've never seen that double lift. Yeah, it's just... So is, just is it just like a... Just, just a double shot? I, I, I'll go through it anyway. I'll go through the whole thing. Um, yeah, I'll go through the whole routine. Um, it's just a double buckle, but I'll go through that. That's not a problem. The other wee thing I wanted to show you was a very, very simple, simple... Um, I'll go back to that in a second. Just yeah, a for sure. Very, very very simple uh idea here many people are intimidated by triumphs because of the shuffles and things like that you know mm -hmm. so this is a very very basic triumph that you can do and i'll teach this as well it's no bother so i mean it is a free choice so a card is selected a card's not forced right so uh, you can see the card there so this card's lost lost in the deck okay Nothing fancy. The cards are shuffled up and you're going to split the deck. Now, I'm going to turn this half face up, shuffle them into here. And you can see the cards are obviously mixed up. Very nice. And then every card should be facing the correct way, except the selected card. Now, that's very simple. Very beautiful. Very simple. And, um, Straightforward. That's it. Straightforward. And you've got a sort of mini Daryl display going on. Just a sort of mini, yeah. you know. Um, but, yeah, yeah. All very simple. So, um, I'll try and explain this the best I can. So, a um, little bit of history about this. is So, basically, it's... Um, uh, it's the main name is Trevor Lewis. He published a trick way, way back. I think it was 1972. I think he called it um, uh, Aces Plus or something like that. Was it Topsy Turvy Aces or Slow Motion Aces? And uh, it was first published. Where I've got that written down somewhere. It was published in the Pentagram, Volume Three, Number Eleven, in 1972. But Frank Garcia and Al Cooper had a method as well, and it, I think it was Frank Garcia who called it. O Henry Aces. Now the first time oh, I no. yeah, the first time I seen this um I don't know, first time I seen this in conjunction with Peter Kane's Jazz Aces was in the early eighties by a friend of mine called Stephen Hamilton. Uh, and in Stephen's book, you can find a trick called Jazzed Up O Henry, 
Now, Stephen was doing this, not this, not this routine. Stephen was doing, uh, you know, combining um, ja uh, Peter Kane's Jazz Aces with the O. Henry ending way back in the early 80s. Now, many other people have, you know, I mean, John, John Bannon's got one as well. Um, as I say, Frank Garcia, there's, there's many O. Henry, um, uh, you know, <coughs> that other magicians have done. This is not original at all. This is just my little take on it. And um, so here, here it is. So, so let's go. Four aces, four red cards. So I always have two same valued cards together. And this, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll start again. <laughs> just tilt it up a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, cool. So, um, so four reds, four aces, and you'll notice that these two values are the same. Um, I won't explain too much about that, but it's it's to do with the counts when you do the counts. So, have these two the same, two red nines. Okay, so that's the starting position, and quite openly, you're showing the aces and you're turning these four red cards down. There's no switches or anything at this point. You are just placing the aces on top of the deck. Okay. Now yep. you're, you're preparing for a bottom deal now, right? So you, you're going to deal here, a top, here a bottom, top, top. So this is a bottom deal. I am I am trying to follow along with you. That's why. I, yeah, yeah, I no, wanna... that's cool. So. Do you want me to start you... again? No, no, no. You you start yep. with a with a top, right? Top. Then, a then bottom. With a bottom. Yeah. And then with a top. 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 Then, and then, a, then a stud oh, top. Stud stud top. So it's face up. Oh, okay. I have the jacks. Jack. Okay. Now, so you have four cards as you should have. Now you're going to do a double lift, but you're this is a double buckle. So you're going, you're going pinky, ring finger. So it's. Pinky ah. ring finger. So very so, nice. So so from there, Biz, you're going pinky ring finger double. Yeah. Okay? And I don't hold a break either. You don't need to. Yeah. No, because I do the same thing again. I go pinky ring finger. Very nice. Okay? So you deal that odd card down the top of the ace. At least the odd cards go on top there. Left side. Okay. And then you squiggle and cut these. Now all you're going to do here is, is an Elmsley count. That's it. So one, two, three, four. Yep. Keep these keep these face up in your left hand. That's really important. Lift these up. And then show this ace. Now, actually do this because you're going to be doing that again in a minute, but you're doing nothing there. Okay. Okay? Turn this down. See, there's no repositioning here. This is why I like it. Uh, you're going to go into a triple lift, but it's a push off triple. Yep. Very easy. Very easy because of the bottom card, so and that just shows a different card. Yep. The reason why you don't do a double because the same card would show. So you do a triple there, right? Place it down there. Again, no repositioning. Dump. Pick these up. Now, I actually do an Elmsley count here, right? Do an Elmsley count, but I know I didn't do this. I forgot to do this. Actually, casually show these. You can. They're all different. They are. Yeah. Keep them face up. Put these on top. Show the ace. Now, you, we're going to do a move now that you're probably conversant with. It's a Marlowe move. You're getting a break under the top card with your pinky. Yep. Square these up. You're going to take off the top ace, but take away the bottom three. 
So the bottom three cards are underneath that ace. That's one, yep. two, three. Sorry, wait a minute, wait a second. Hang on a second. I need to go back again. Yep. Sorry. Right. Let's go back. That, that's <laughs> this one. So you're going one, two, three, and then you're coming back like this. So it's like a fifth, fifth peel. Did, did you understand yeah, let's that? Go, let's go again yeah. for everybody. It's quite complicated that actually, right? So you're back here. So, so really, you've got a break under four, three aces in the odd card. Yeah. But you're going to you're going to take away these three cards with the ace, but you're going to hold okay. a break, keep maintain the break. Okay, maintain the break. Very good. And then two, three. Now you've got a break. They think this is the block. Now you're going to okay. you're going to yeah. It's like you're going to take the and you're going to dump them there. So this is the odd cards. Yeah. <laughs> right. You dump these on top. Pick these up. Do exactly the same as you done the last time. Place two to the bottom. Now How this many odd cards are, gonna, are you going to have? Four five, cards in the end? Five. five. Uh, one, one, odd card and five, one odd card and five. Yeah. One odd card and the aces. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Right. And then cut two to the bottom. Okay. Right. Now you're going to do push off. Push off. Double push off and put that in top. Ah, yes, very nice. Dump these down. Now you're going to, now you could do an Elmsley count here, but I don't. I do an OPEC count. So I take the bottom card first, not the top card. Ah, okay. One, two, three, four. Yep. So, it's the, so it's the bottom card that ends up on top. And you only see that fleetingly. Yeah. That is very nice because you can actually show it much more open at the end when it yes. ends up on top. Yes. Like that. And your, nice. clean, your clean up is that you take this this block, scoop the whole lot up and it adds it to the, the odd card. Oh, so nice. So nice. There we go. All right. I've won Trick. Wonderful trick. I think people think people watching are going to be enjoying performing this for sure. Yeah, it's um, it's. I mean, it's not too difficult, you know. I mean, you don't have to do double buckles and things. You just do a double lift as normal, you know. Um, yeah. And you know, triple push offs and things like that. You don't necessarily have to do all of that. Um, but this one is for people that want to, you know, they enjoy a little bit more sleight of hand. And yeah. I think the next one with the triumph, I think it's perfect for people that you know. They don't focus so much on sleight of hand. Yeah, I mean, it's almost, I mean, it, with that, I mean, you get a card controlled, um, you know, it's it's on the top, for example, right? King of Diamonds, yep. right? The deck's all face down. So, uh, basically, you need this king reversed in the bottom. That's, that's what you need, right? There's many, many ways you can do that. You can shuffle it to the bottom and do a half pass on a, on a single card or do as I done. It's on the top at the moment. Right, but during a, during a, an overhand shuffle, uh, all I'm doing is that. Uh, you have to explain that a bit. I, I don't even know what you did. Right, here, here we go. So, so I'll try and expose it. So all I'm doing is this. You're pushing. Ah, yes. Oh, so nice. So nice. I didn't see yeah. anything. Yeah, so... And a good tip is to almost keep, try not to have the deck like that, have it like that, so that so that you can bring it up to that position to shuffle. So you're doing that. Pretty well covered. So nice. Yeah? Now... I've never seen this. Okay, so you've got it on the bottom now, reversed. Now, this is a very interesting move coming up now, and I've found that a lot of magicians don't know whose it is. But I'll explain whose it is. So it's a bit like the optical tenkai move, but it's not. It's, it's slightly different. So you hold the deck like this, as if you're going to farrow, but you don't do that. Hold the deck here. So it's a, it's, a, it's in dealing position, but you just come up to here. Yeah. Watch, watch what happens, Biz. We just do this. 
such a beautiful retention. Uh. Yeah, it's a, it's a nothing move. You don't. It's nothing. You just do that. It's nothing. Yeah. Right. So. Nice. But 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 you're obviously in this position. So. Yeah. That move is by a magician called Lewis Haley. Uh, the reverse card. It was it was first published in. Uh, mm. T T T Page writes. Um, notebook in 1933. <laughs> wow! Wow! Right? And again, it was republished again, called Re the Reverse Card, in the Genie Magazine in 1936, October issue. Man, you really yeah. know the credits. This is so beautiful. Yeah, his name is Lewis Haley. Um, I, I he was, wrote it down. I'm going to look it up. A piano teacher from Wisconsin. He died. He died in 1922. Rest in peace. Six, 64 years old. So anyway, you're here. All you do is turn this over. There we go. Yeah. Just do a kind of closed shuffle here. Shuffle them oh. in. Square up. Now this is nothing really. You come out towards the diagonal here. Revolve both over. Very nice, this one. Then cross your hands for the two face up ones. Yeah. And revolve them over. Yeah. The one nearest you, you place on top. Turn the whole deck over and bang, you're done. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Lewis Haley. Yeah, great. With credits and everything, George, thank you so much for these two tricks. No, um, no, 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 it's a pleasure. Perform that, the aces, the ace assembly, very nice. I like that. We've actually come to the end of this interview, and always in the end, I pass it over to uh, the person that I'm interviewing, the magician, and um, you're free to say anything, you know, if you would like to leave people with a last thought. This is your opportunity. If you want to say a joke, if you want to recommend something, it's completely up to you. This is like your time. Okay. Well, I'll be quite short and brief, I suppose. Um, uh, the, the only thing I would say is, is that um, you know, when you're when you're practicing magic and you're learning sleight of hand, try to make sure that that um, you get a complete understanding of what you're striving for. You don't waste too much time in practicing wrongly. It's really, I mean, I've done it myself for years. So if you can, if you can get a benchmark, or if you can see someone that's conversant in the move, only, only practice a little bit in earnest, in, in earnest, you know, uh, just just practice a little bit, and uh, then show it to that person. Uh, get some feedback on it, and then continue your practice, uh, and you know your serious practice because. You know, if you practice wrongly for lots of time, it's very difficult to get out of the habit once you practice a move wrongly, you know? Um, yes. So, I suppose that's all I, all I would say, you know, um, make sure that you can, you know, uh, meet the right people, uh, ask the right advice, be pleasant, be courteous, you know? Um, very often, if you say you're struggling, where can I find it? They'll show you the move. And what it should look like, you know. Um, yeah. But it's been a pleasure. It's been nice. It's been uh, very enjoyable, and it's nice to meet there you. Guys. It really has been a pleasure. Thank you very much for being on the show. If anybody watching would like to find George, do you have an Instagram or Facebook, or if people can contact you if they want to ask you for tips? Yeah, you can. Well, you can. If you Google George McBride. Um, you will find my website. Just Google my name and my website will pop up. There's some I, will, I will put the website in the, in the description of the video anyway. Okay. I don't mind, I mean, anyone that wants to reach me by email, I don't mind giving it out. So it's geo.mcb at ntlworld.com. I know that. <laughs> there we go. If you guys would like to contact George, email him. I think he'll be more than happy to reply to any questions you have, yeah. honestly. Thank you very much, guys, for watching up until now. This has been the seventh episode, lucky number seven, with George McBride. 
and um, stay tuned for more episodes where we're going to have more more magicians like Alan Rorison and John Kerry for the following episodes. Until then, stay true, practice, and have fun performing magic. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.